This is Dr. Mayberry again, continuing the upper limb with the ulna. Okay? The radius, remember, had that circular head. The ulna, if you tip it sideways, has a U-shaped head or ulna. That's not why it's named that, but it can help you remember it. Okay? So the ulna is kind of funky looking. Uh, it doesn't actually have a head uh, because I told you heads are usually rounded and look like heads. Uh, so nothing is really called the head on the ulna. Instead, we have these two processes. And if you remember the names of the fossas in the humerus, then you remember the names of these processes. So you have the olecranon process and the coronoid process. Okay? So if you have been studying a lot and looking back at your notes from other bones, you may remember that the scapula has a coracoid process, the ulna has a coronoid process. And this is annoying uh, and hard to remember. So I remember it because scapula, coracoid, and ulna coronoid. Okay, so that's how I remember which one belongs to which bone. Uh, so coronoid process. So on the humerus, we said that the larger fossa was the olecranon fossa because O's are bigger than C's, uh, which again is just a method that I use. It is not uh, a real you know, way uh, that people named it or anything like that. But the olecranon process on the ulna is the larger of the two processes. The coronoid process is the smaller one, okay? Uh, so olecranon, coronoid. In between them, this is the semi-lunar notch. Lunar is the moon, uh, semi, like half, so it's a half moon notch uh, between the two processes, okay? It's also called the trochlear notch. Because remember the trochlea on the humerus, that was that spool-shaped sort of thing uh, at the distal end of the humerus, so it's the trochlear notch as well, so you can call it either. Uh, the radial notch, if you come to your coronoid process, this is the radial notch right here. So it's called the radial notch because the radius articulates there, the head of the radius. Oops. So the head of the radius sits right in there. Uh, so that means in anatomical position, if if the ulna is on the pinky or fifth digit side of your forearm, that that radial notch must face laterally. So, right, because that's lateral. So that's going to help us side the ulna in a few minutes. Okay. So travel downward from that radial notch and you come to this sharp surface. That sharp surface is the interosseous crest of the ulna. So that membrane that goes between the radius and the ulna is that interosseous membrane. It does the same thing to the ulna as it did to the radius. It pulls out a ridge of bone. So that's that interosseous crest. And it is sharp, but it also is just sort of distal to that radial notch. So you should find it by feel or by sight. Okay. So we also, on the radius, had a styloid process. We have another styloid process on the ulna. It's sharper on the ulna, uh, so sometimes it's easier for people to remember that that's what it is, but this is another styloid process. It's a sharp point off the distal end, okay? So, other than that, I can show you a nutrient foramen on this ulna because it's, it's relatively well-defined uh, and also someone put their pencil tip in it. So be sure when you're working with the bones, whether they're plastic or real in the lab, that you are not gesturing with the tips of your pens or pencils. We have pipe cleaners for those purposes. Uh, but that is a very well-defined nutrient form in, on a shaft of an ulna. So they're usually a little closer to the proximal end on the ulna. Um, where you can spot them. So that's that. Let's side the ulna. Okay, so we said that this end articulates with the humerus. The radius, of course, is going to articulate along the side, starting with that radial notch. And then the distal end carpals in the wrist. Okay, and again, that's the detail that you need to know uh, at this point. So those are the articulations. So, so to side it, again, remember anatomical position where the arms are down like this. Remember that the ulna is on the medial side of the arm and that the radial notch has to bump into the radius, which should be lateral. So then sort of the crown of this piece of information is that this semilunar notch uh, should be facing, if you're standing like this, anteriorly. Okay, so if you put it in your arm, the styloid process then should point toward the pinky. 
So the styloid process of the radius pointed toward the thumb, styloid process of the ulna should point toward the pinky. Okay, so this is actually a right ulna. Okay, so ask me any questions that you have in class.